This is HuffPost Live, I'm Mike Sachs. Among the greatest trends in American politics these past few years has been the rise of the Tea Party and the mainstreaming of the libertarian movement. One of the figures who is emblematic of this rise and is seen as a hero to many in the Tea Party is Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, who has a new book out called Government Bullies, How Everyday Americans Are Being Harassed, Abused, and Imprisoned by the Feds. And now, we're honored to have Senator Paul in our hangout alongside members of the HuffPost Live community, who we'll get to a bit later, but first, Senator Paul, how are you? You're a true man of the community here in our, in our hangout. Tell us why you wrote the book. Well, you know, what I found out when I came to Washington is that a lot of well-intentioned regulations end up somehow morphing into disasters. So, for example, in 1974, we passed a law, the Clean Water Act, and it said you can't discharge pollutants into the navigable waters of the United States. Well, you know, it sounds pretty reasonable. You shouldn't be allowed to discharge chemicals or benzene or what have you into the Ohio River. But somewhere along the way, that morphed into you can't put clean dirt on your own backyard because somehow dirt became defined as a pollutant and your backyard became defined as a wetlands. So really, this has ensnared people and put a lot of, I think, innocent people in jail for lengthy terms or lengthy uh, prison term service. Let's talk about something that is probably a little bit near and dear to, to many of the HuffPost community's hearts, which is the, the TSA and, and what people call the security theater. Don't get me started on the TSA. I may not stop. I think I just got to start it, but I'll have to stop you if you go a little too long. <laughs> a lot of this has been going on for years, both Republicans and Democrats, left and right. Anybody who's a frequent traveler is annoyed with the TSA. And really it gets back to the whole point on terrorism and security. If everyone is equally the same threat as being a potential terrorist, we're going to have to lose a lot of privacy and a lot of dignity. My point is, let's uh, have a more probable cause oriented. You know, if you have probable cause to think you're a danger to the plane or to the other passengers, by all means, let's use some approach to do an additional screening. But to do six-year-old children from Bowling Green have an agent sticking their hands in a little girl's pants, uh, that isn't making us safer. That's making us less safe. Now, yesterday, uh, Romney went on air to say that uh, he wouldn't repeal all the parts of, uh, of Obamacare. And I know you're definitely on board. You wrote an amicus brief for the Supreme Court about this. You're on board for a full repeal. Is, is, what kind of daylight is there now between you and Romney? Well, I think the problem is, is that when you mandate what you want to sell in insurance, you make it more expensive. So if we say we're going to mandate fertility coverage, sex change coverage, stomach stapling, and previous conditions, if we mandate anything, we add to the cost. Someone has to pay for it. Senator, I, I want to actually now turn this on over to the community because uh, everyone here is, is quite interested in talking with you and asking you some, some good questions. Senator Paul, uh, I looked at your website this afternoon, and from what I can tell, uh, you want the federal government pretty much out of education. You want the federal government out of what you call death taxes. You want the federal government out of most energy policy. You want the federal government out of most health care policy. And you want the federal government out of most environmental regulation. On the other hand, you are in favor of a federal definition of when life begins. You know, I think there are very few instances where the federal government should get involved. For the most part, I am for states' rights. But, you know, I also do support the federal government being involved in terms of uh, in our history when we had slavery, when our history when we had abuse of civil rights. I think there was a, a role for the federal government. But then it does get to when does life begin? And it is a difficult issue. But once you decide life begins, I think you do say that the government has a role in protecting life. Thank you, Senator Paul, for joining us. I actually just had a quick question. Um, I know that you have supported or at least recently endorsed the Romney Ryan ticket and uh, seeing that the, you know, the Romney Ryan ticket, one or the other, uh, have supported all aspects of the Patriot Act, have supported, you know, um, uh, unwarranted surveillance of American citizens, have supported a return of troops to Iraq in some cases with regard to Paul Ryan's statements in the past. How is it that you can reconcile, and I understand what you said about the Republican Party and not getting out of the Republican Party, but how can you reconcile all of those problems and all that, that, that kind of direction against social rights that the Republican Party has been moving 
with an endorsement and even a, a speech at the Republican National Convention. So how, how does that not uh, create some, some level of double standard with all due respect? That we choose the candidate that is the, uh, we think has the preponderance of the best policies. We don't get the candidate we always want. Everybody chooses someone in the primary, Democrat side or Republican side. We don't always win, but in general, most people stay within their party. I also just don't think it's practically a value to support a third party. I've done it before, and I don't think it's a practical value because the, uh, the laws on getting on the ballot are very difficult for third parties. And also, the debates are pretty much rigged. The debates are controlled by the Republican Democrat Commission. Um, so, so, Lucy, you were going to ask something uh, similar to what he was just addressing. Were you at all satisfied by the answer? I was curious about the senator's stance on the war on drugs because he, you know, has been great on the Patriot Act and uh, which, you know, the Fourth Amendment is a huge part of that. Another huge violator of the Fourth Amendment is the war on drugs. You know, one of the things we've learned about Fast and Furious is that there are allegations that a major part of that gun running was really about protecting the Sonona cartel and their running of drugs into the United States much more than it was just about handing a few guns to people. So there's there's a lot of intertwined moving pieces there that need exposition and, and frankly, an explanation by the government as to, you know, if we're so against people selling narcotics, why is it that we're helping people do it?